Oggetti socievoli. Oggetti socievoli presenta. A conversation with is hosted by Prisca Arosio. My name is Ahmed Al Malak. I'm an architect by training and academic at Coventry University. I teach uh, masters for uh, architectural technology students and urban design. I'm the co-founding director of Round City Magazine, an international bilingual magazine that focuses on architecture, art, and culture in the Arab world and the Middle East. And I'm the founding director of the Mayus Excellence Award, an architecture prize championing the best of architecture. My research focus are visual culture and the impacts of visual culture on our life. I would like to start this conversation talking about the home and the house. How were you leaving your house before COVID and how it has changed during this lockdown experience? Also related to the design challenge that you had with the Tama use. I live in a flat in the city center of Coventry. Uh, the reason it's a flat in the city center is proximity to work. That was important for me. For that reason, I was happy to live in a flat. Once the pandemic happened, there was no need for me to go to work. So most of the time was spent at the flat and it started to feel a bit small. One of the main changes that happened during lockdown was me starting to get rid of things at home. The number of chairs or sofas is halved, the coffee tables, all of these are gone. I started to feel I wanted to free that space, to have more space for me there because the living room is not now just a living room where I sit an hour. It's now where I eat, where I exercise and where I work. So one of the main changes was getting rid of things that before I thought it was good to have. I have some back issues. Once I started working from home, it got worse. One of the main changes in my lifestyle since March 2020, every day I prefer to sit on the floor rather than on a chair. My yoga mat is now my chair. I always move and this movement gives me less tension. One of the main things that I struggled with was the need for a space that is a garden or an outer space or a courtyard, something like this. In the UK, we don't have that much because of the weather. It's not suitable to have a terrace or a, or a balcony because you're not going to sit there most of the time. Next time I buy a house or I buy a flat, it has to have an element that is outside, a space that is outside because I felt without being outside a few times a day, it's uh, very difficult to cope with the pandemic. For the design challenge, it was international, but in some ways, most of the submissions we receive are Middle East and uh, Southeast Asia. And one of the things that is very interesting is, let's say, as Arab homes or Iraqi homes that came down from Somer, Ur and Sumeria and Babylon, we had courtyard houses. But in the 50s and the 40s, the, the, the architects who studied in Europe, they came back and we went into the direction of modern architecture where we had a garden in the front or a garden in the back. And with more population in the countries, the gardens became smaller and then the garden became a garage and they got rid of the garden at some point. And what I felt is in all of these submissions, the people who live in Iraq or the countries where they build homes, they are looking for, for that old courtyard that was their home, that space where you're still in your home, you still can gather there, but it's still outside. As for the countries like Jordan and Lebanon and Syria, where they're used more to flats, you can see now more utilization of their roof. They started to appreciate architects who were advocating for courtyard houses and roofs and uh, terraces because at some point even the balconies were locked and closed just like me when I had to declutter my living room. People are decluttering their roofs and their balconies and making use of that space just to be connected with the outside. The second thing that I noticed which was interesting, people looked for tranquility, for calm environments, but you see the integration of water features, which is very common in, in that part of the world. We have little fountains, so like Alhambra, if you've been in Alhambra and the Sea, it's, it's just the sound of water, of the little dripping of water. Even you see it in a Zaytari camp, the refugee camp in Jordan, the Syrians are so used to it. They have the fountains and all of these in a refugee camp. So I saw this, I noticed this a lot in the submissions. There was a water feature 
in a garden or a courtyard or, or something like that. And as for the European entries, what I noticed was more greenery inside. Some of the Italian submissions on their balconies there were, you would see one pot, but you don't imagine all of the window is covered by it and it's hanging. And uh, these are the main things that I noticed. What I was fascinated about the submission is that a lot of it make a house and within these houses they put a lot of objects. So of course they put the furniture but some people like put a guitar or yeah. they put a, a computer. So they go into really specific elements that usually as an architect you wouldn't really put when you are designing a home. The way we did the challenge is we wanted it to be a public thing, not just focused on architects and designers. So we made a public vote for, for the winning submissions. So what you see is not selected by a specialist as the winners, it's the people who voted for it. And actually we reached a million people who participated in the selection of it. It was our biggest interaction uh, with anything. What you look at and what you see people voting for is probably what the people felt like having also in their homes. In relation also to the design challenge, you are asking for a 25 square meter apartment, but then what is the criteria to have a good floor plan? It's uh, definitely culturally related. A floor plan that is an open floor, American kitchen, doesn't go well in a conservative culture where you need private and semi-public space where you get the guests. And it's very contextual. It's correct based on the context it's in. In the challenge that we had, we had to judge it based on the submissions. So some of them were a space in a house. Some of them were on a roof. The thing is, we didn't look at it this way as a 2D thing. It's a good floor plan. You can feel we are in lockdown because everyone was looking at the feeling. The, the feeling Feeling was more important than the floor plan and probably because we all changed our floor plans while we're living in our homes at least the way you lay the furniture at some schools when we teach that we even tell them which way you put the TV which way the furniture you put this on I started to believe everything is is flexible I think to answer that in that panel we discussed feeling more than a good floor plan said that do you think it's gonna change the way that we are designing home? I believe we will. We as users now have different requirements for our homes. In 2010 until 2016 or 14 in the UK, we had a, a government scheme which is to fill the cavities in the walls for insulation. They pour, I don't remember what was the material, but they insulate the house and the house doesn't breathe. You don't want a house where it's hot all the time or the house needs to breathe. That's when I'm spending so much time in my house. There are things that now I require to be part of it. It might mean I'll have to do it to redesign some components, but probably I will not take the standard that was being made or still being made now without changes. Because mass production of houses, mass building, you have smaller windows. And that's a trend in the new housing market in the UK because it saves money and also it's warmer. But think of it, you are spending a year, maybe you'll spend another year at home with a small window. It's almost like a prison cell. These are the things I will definitely think about when I buy a house. We will anyway have to revise the way we design because of the changing climate. It's not going to be the same, not just because of the pandemic. How did you value your object before lockdown or before pandemic and how this has changed during the lockdown experience? For work, it was the chair. I had to get a new chair. I had to get a chair from the university that is designed for me because of the problems of my back. But that's probably a common answer. I actually got a stand for books because I started reading more. And the more I read and the more I look down, the more I felt my back is not getting better. So now I read with a stand, which is like this laptop in front of me, just opens and holds the book. And this became the most valuable object I have the other object which has now multi-uses is my yoga mat, which I just bought a few years ago for yoga when I was going to go to classes. Used them twice. Now it's more used than the chair. I changed the lighting at home. You will realize when you get a house or when you get a flat, the way you get the light, it has to be well designed. So when you work at home, your eyes don't get strained. All of these things you start to realize it's not as good as what you thought it was, you have to properly do it. But these objects 
were very crucial for me at these times at home. What sociable objects means to you? What make you think when you hear the word of sociable objects? Sociable objects, when I heard it, I felt things, objects that I use to communicate or engage with other people. Do you have a sociable object? It's the obvious one. It was my phone, my camera with my family, talking to them when I couldn't see them and couldn't travel. That was the thing I would say my sociable object.